Hello everyone and welcome back. Are y'all ready for the most interesting labor and delivery story? Well, here it goes. So we had the girls, we are not pregnant anymore. We had them at, I was 38 weeks and five days and this happened March 7th. And so it was a Sunday night going into Monday morning. Maverick and I sleep on the couch like normal day. Maverick actually was having a night tear around 1.30. And so I woke him up and I was like, okay, let's pray. And then I was like, let's watch an episode of Bubble Guppies to kind of calm him down so he can go back to sleep. Because when he has these night tears, like he wakes up the entire house. So it was 30 minutes and exactly at two in the morning, he hands me the phone and he's like, mommy, I'm ready to go to sleep. And so when he hands me the phone, my water breaks and I'm like freaking out. I was like, this is actually happening. Like my water broke. And I read all these stories about women and how like what it would feel like when your water breaks. <clears throat> and people would say it's like a balloon popping, but a balloon popping is like a loud sound. For me, it was more like your back, like you pop your back and it wasn't painful. It was just like, uh, uh, you like you crack your back and then it's like this gush of fluid and it's all this liquid coming out and it's more than you peeing on yourself because you can't stop. Well, for me, like it was, it was like a river. <laughs> so I'm like, Maverick, Maverick, go tell daddy my water's breaking and Maverick's just as dramatic as me. So he's like, your water's breaking, mommy, your water's breaking. I was like, yes, go tell daddy. So he jumps up, he runs in the room and he tells Chris, cause Chris is sleeping in the uh, room, we're in the living room. And so I hear Chris jump up and come in the room and he's like, um, is it supposed to be blood? And I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> and so I finally turn like get up because this whole time I'm still gushing all of this liquid so I get up and I look and it's like a murder scene <laughs> it's like all these clots of blood and it's blood everywhere and I'm still gushing out of blood so I tell Chris take a picture send it to Allison and I am going to go in the shower because I'm it's still blood coming out so I go in the shower and it's just clots of blood and, you know, I am praying and I am not worried at this point. Like I'm not scared of anything. And so Chris is on the phone with Allison at this point and I hear him like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I'm like, can you put it on speakerphone? So he puts it on speakerphone right when she says, yeah, y'all need to go straight to the hospital. And so she, as soon as she said that, it was like this, I was like, I know that we're going to have to have a C-section and I'm okay. So I immediately switch to, we're having a C-section. So I know my bag isn't quite packed for hospital stay or C-section stay, which is like two to three days. So I'm in the shower. Chris is like calmly freaking out. <laughs> I don't know how to describe that, but I was not even aware of him. I'm just like, okay, I need another pair of socks. I need this. I need that. Like I'm running through my head as I'm in a shower. And so I'm still bleeding at that time. But I just knew like I, I was going to be okay in the girls. As well. well, most importantly, I knew the girls are going to be okay. So I finally get out the shower because the water is getting cold. And Chris is like, can you hurry up? <laughs> Cause he's freaking out. And I was like, okay. So I just put on a robe. I have nothing else on and I grab a towel and it's like in between my legs and we get in the car. He's packed up everything. I was like, oh, like, good job. You packed up everything. He's like, yeah, <laughs> you've been in the shower forever. It was a classic Curtis moment. If you know my family, Curtis is notorious for like taking his time. He will go check the mail when it's time to go or like, make a sandwich or something like that and it's like everybody's like let's go I pulled a classic Curtis and I was just like I wanted to go check the mail I seriously did want to go check the mail though but we get in the car and I, my water's still breaking and it's still blood so we I call the hospital <clears throat> and let them know that we're on, my, on the way and they're like okay so we get there and I have to walk to the elevator and I'm like dripping blood on the floor we get to the elevator y'all and the elevator does not work 
yeah so we have to walk up the steps <laughs> to get to labor and delivery so we get to labor and delivery i go to triage and the contractions are now starting like while i was at home and taking a shower and all of that I wasn't actually having contractions, but once we got there and I checked in, like I'm having contractions and I'm still like dripping. Well, my water's still breaking and it's just, I can feel clots of blood coming out of me. So the two nurses that are there, they were so incredibly nice. They're like, oh yeah, you're staying here. So they're checking me out, y'all. So the nurse is like, um, we call, we're trying to figure out like where your doctor is or who you, who's your doctor or something like that. So meanwhile, y'all remember I let go of the second doctor, Dr. McConnell. And I told her, you know, we are going with the midwife. So the nurse comes back in and she's like, well, we call Dr. McConnell. And basically she was like, you're going to, on her end, you are no longer her patient. So I have to go with whoever's on call. So the guy, the this is old white doctor that's on call. So he comes in and he was like, yeah, like y'all aren't, you um, terminated services. Like I wouldn't come at three in the morning either. Like he made this like sly comment. And I was just like, Jesus. So he checks me and he's like, okay, you're only two centimeters, but... We're going to have to have a C-section because you are, your baby A is breached and you're a V-back and all of this stuff. And so I was trying to figure out when was he going to like acknowledge like all of this blood or anything like that. It was just like the textbook answer. So then they come in and they're like, hey, we're going to prep you for a C-section like right now. And I was like, okay, yeah, like y'all should. I'm still like, there's blood everywhere. <laughs> I am literally blinking blood. And so they bring the C-section paperwork. And I already know that the paperwork is saying that I uh, am volunteering to have a C-section. And so I was like, I, why am I signing this if we have to have a C-section? Can you bring the doctor back in so, you know, he can explain? So he comes back in and he's just like, yeah. And I was like, yeah. So why are we doing this again? He, again, sticking to his story. Baby A's breached. You're a V-back. It's just safer to get them out this way, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like looking at him. I was like, okay. And so he leaves. Um, by this time, Chris is here because Maverick is with us. But Papa, thank, shout out to Papa. He comes in, picks up Maverick. So Chris is now in the back with us. And then, so they come back again. It's like a whole bunch of nurses, everybody in there. And I was like, can y'all just give me a minute? And so we call Allison. And I was like, Allison, what what's going on? Like, they're just giving me the textbook answer. Like, you need a C-section because it's breached. And, you know, it's a V-back. And she was like, look, <clears throat> if you were with me at the birthing center and your, late, your water broke, and it was all of that blood that I saw in the picture, I would be transferring you. There's either something wrong with you, or there's something wrong with the girls. But they do not know that until they cut you open and see what's going on and where's all this blood coming from. And I was just like, why couldn't that doctor say that? Like, you were sticking to the, it's breached, it's a V-back, when you could have literally just said the word blood, and I would have been like, cool, let me sign everything. But you just didn't, didn't do that. Anyways, so Allison was like, look, you, <coughs> excuse me, this like has to happen, and it has to happen now. And I was like, cool, I, that's all I was looking for. So uh, they come back in, I sign, I make sure I notated that in the document and I signed all the c-section paperwork and it turns out that that I don't know what happened but that guy that was checking me out wasn't actually the guy that did the c-section it was this Indian lady she was amazing like she was so cool so they are prepping me they will me immediately to the OR room and um I get my epidural and Chris now tells me later on that the Indian lady 
actually was scrubbing up while he was waiting and she was just like are you excited you ready to go and uh, he's like yeah we've been praying for you everybody in there he was like oh she was like down to pray she was like you know you want to pray all together but it was like literally like it's time to cut me open <laughs> so um they cut me open and Mila of course comes out and she doesn't cry they take her immediate to the room I, I can see the room and I tell Chris like go in there and so she has blood all over her um we have pictures and videos I was gonna include it but Chris was like no nobody want to see that but if you do let me know but Mila has she swallowed blood and she has blood all around her and so they're cleaning her up um and sucking out the blood that she has swallowed and then marley comes out she is crying perfectly fine <coughs> so what happened was my placenta had already started to detach and it was on the verge of rupturing so that's like what was happening inside of me and it's crazy because a friend of mine had the something like that happen to her as well but she, she's okay everything's fine but it's just crazy how, not crazy, it's God, how they came out perfectly fine outside of <laughs> Mila like swallowing blood. They didn't have to have any icy, I mean, NICU, nothing. They cleaned up Mila and Marley and literally put them on in my hands and like sewed me up. It didn't take long. I wasn't knocked out and wheeled me back into the room once we were done and just like comparing notes like everything that went down these girls was perfectly fine nothing wrong they passed every flying colors weight jaundice anything that was thrown at them like they passed with flying colors and even me like I was fine outside of the <laughs> having to have a c-section and the whole blood thing but I still didn't lose a lot of blood where I had to get like a blood transfusion or anything like that so I am just so 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 grateful that everything worked out perfectly even though the things that like happened and there's even more that happened after that like for real short short version um when you have a c-section you have to have like these four p's you have to pee within like 18 hours or something and i could not do it to save my life i was drinking all of this stuff and thank goodness i had this amazing nurse so then they put the iv in me and that got defected and they wanted to take it out and put another one in but i'm like y'all stop giving me fluids i'm done i'm over this so we ended up like I was negotiating with the nurses. That's why you got to be nice to everybody. They tried to prick me three times in the other arm. Did not work. Could not find a vein. And I'm like, look, if y'all give me one hour, I'm a pee. And we don't have, we can bypass all of this. So I did end up doing it. We had to bypass everything. Take the IV out. We finally got discharged after two days. Then my blood pressure went up. So I had to go back to the hospital went to the emergency room and I they gave me like blood pressure medicine and stuff like that but all in all <laughs> we are okay all oh, the swelling the swelling was crazy I had so much swelling in my legs my whole feet and legs was just like it was a lot of swelling but anyways after a week and a half swelling has went down blood pressure has went down I'm still like taking my medicine and monitoring it and I will say like in high side compared to Maverick's c-section because I'm only two weeks postpartum and there's no way I was this far ahead in my recovery when I was with Maverick in two weeks I was still a slave to the medicine like in pain because of the c-section so that alone like another another area to be grateful about <clears throat> I don't know why I have this cough. Um, because I'm already on the way to recovery and it's happening a lot faster than I would have thought it would ever be. So even if it didn't go as planned, and I've been definitely 
not that I've been struggling with it. I've been forgiving myself um, and forgiving the fact that what I wanted to happen didn't happen. But the fact that these girls, like the main thing for me is that they were, they stayed longer. I do know that if I would have had that scheduled C-section at 37, like we probably would have been in, they would have been in NICU. They wouldn't have been ready. So they came exactly when they were ready in God's timing and how they were supposed to go. My recovery is already going smoothly. I had them at 210. Your girl is 165. So <laughs> like, I'm super proud of that. I've been dropping that weight. We have been trying to just learn how to have two babies at the same time. I don't wish that on anybody. <laughs> two babies at the same time is a lot, a lot to work. I am sleep deprived, um, breastfeeding, pumping. There's always something going on. Someone always wants something. But we are so, so, so happy for our Little girls, Mila and Marley, they're precious. They're actually really good. They only really cry when something is going on. But still, I will. Hopefully, I can add pictures. I just need to post them. I've been super busy. Like, it's hard to talk on my phone. It's hard to text back. It's just hard to do anything but be attentive to the girls. So that's why I kind of been like not posting or anything. I can't believe I had time to record this video. <laughs> I was like, I have to say something because the last video is I'm in labor. But yes, that is my labor and delivery story. I will keep you guys updated um, about what's going on in my crazy life. The crazy simian life with all my 50 living kids. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.